I'm a care leaver who's 20 years old. I'm not just a care leaver, I'm a mother to the most beautiful little girl in the world. Today I'm going to tell you about neglect and what this meant for me. The definition of neglect is uncared for, and that's exactly what I was, uncared for. Uncared for by my parents, uncared for by my school, my social workers, my doctors, the hospital, everyone. Well, that's how I feel anyway. And this is my story, a very short snippet of my life. I grew up in Surrey. I was one of 10 siblings. My mother was physically and emotionally abusing me, and so was my stepdad. The beatings got worse as I got older, the scars got bigger, and so did the heartache. I was a small, vulnerable girl living in a world of hell with what felt like no way out. No one to save me. Because no one listened, I was just a liar to them. A little girl making up nightmares. I was not, and I am not. My life was a nightmare from the minute I woke up until the minute I closed my eyes at night. Not only was I a little girl trying to understand the cruel world around me, I was a student, a carer, a cook and a cleaner. My siblings wouldn't eat or drink if it wasn't for me. I was the one that kept them alive. Well, that was until my baby brother died and my mother blamed me. That day still haunts me. It was not my fault and never will be my fault that my brother died. She just needed someone to blame because she was the worst mum ever. And that's just one example of the emotional abuse that I suffered. The physical abuse started when I was very small. I don't remember life before I was beaten. Some of the worst injuries were broken fingers, broken arms, knives thrown at me, beaten with hedge trimmers and glasses smashed on my head, most of which were left untreated. It was a good day if I didn't get beaten, but they were few and far between. The long lasting side effects of the physical abuse mean that I am now deaf in one ear. No one saved me from this. I didn't need to be deaf. If someone had listened and taken me seriously, I wouldn't be deaf. As an adult, I look back and I wonder how no one noticed. How did no one step in and save me? Were they too scared? Were they as worried about the consequences as I was? There were so, so many professionals in and out of my life. Police, teachers, doctors, hospitals, and so on. I was a mess. A scruffy little girl covered in scars and bruises. If I had seen a child in the state that I was in now as an adult, I can assure you that no fear would take over me. I would step in and I would save them. By doing this, you might just save a life. Like mine, I was saved, luckily, by a teacher who eventually took me seriously. But this did take two beatings within 24 hours of each other to the point where I could not put my arm in my blazer. My mum was the best liar. She was amazing. The best in the business. To the naked eye, we were a perfect family, set up behind closed doors. She was an evil, wicked monster that cared for men, money and drugs way more than she could ever care about our, us kids. My best day growing up was when my stepdad was arrested. This meant my mum was finally nice to me. She let me sit on the sofa and share a box of toffees with her. There was no shouting, no hitting, and a couple of hours of being allowed to just sit down. It was peaceful. I just wish someone had listened sooner. The last years were the hardest on me and they've really scarred me both physically and emotionally. I have scars on my forehead and on the back of my head that hairdressers always point out. I've got a broken nose that I see nothing and now I see nothing but ugly in the mirror and the man behind me who done it. This is the long term impact of not being listened to and leaving a vulnerable child in the hands of people like my parents. The emotional scars keep me up some nights. Am I really to blame for my brother's death? Why did everyone hate me so much? Why didn't I just grow the balls to run and get help sooner? I just feel like I would have coped so much better if I was saved just that little bit sooner. On the other hand, I'm so thankful for being away now because I'm not sure how much longer I had left in that home because the beatings were getting worse and the choice of objects were getting scarier. I think the professionals need to start listening, not just to what they hear, but to also what they see. If I could speak to my younger self now or any other young people in similar situations, to how I was in, 
I would say, get the balls to go out and get the outcome that you would like. My life didn't turn out so bad. I believe that no one would listen because no one ever used to hear what I was saying or act upon it. But the right people do listen and the right people do support you to make your life what you would dream of it to be. Always speak up. You are your own advocate. And I didn't get that far at all by being quiet in meetings and not having my voice heard. I was in the back of the corner watching the hectic hecticness and everything fall apart. So I stopped, I picked up my voice and I walked out of that house and there was no going back. My best day now is most days. I have a wonderful job that I'm always participating in something rewarding and I'm raising a beautiful, happy and bubbly little girl who brings so much laughter and joy to my life. It's no longer a bad life. It's just a bad day sometimes along the way.